Yes, you can fix it. You can fix your battery. And if you can't, at least you're gonna end up with some really, really cool cells like this. You could build other stuff with it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to check a battery that is defective. It's a video that I recorded a little while back, but it's still very valid. Not everything needs to be thrown away. And even if you throw it away, there is valuable stuff in it. These cells are perfect for fixing a, a robot cleaner or building a battery for a portable fridge or just fixing things around the house that requires these cells. Next time when you're gonna have a defective battery and you save the cells, it might work into the next one. So enjoy the video and um, I'm gonna come back with a couple of details throughout the video once I'm gonna finish the editing. So if your battery is not holding charge, which this one doesn't, how do you diagnose that? With really, really simple tools. Uh, all you need is a voltmeter. So first you have to understand how the battery works. This is a BMS. This takes care of every pack of cells over here. You notice I didn't say cell, pack of cells, because this BMF controls three cells. This is a 10S 3P battery, 37 volt, and it's only charging and discharging about 100 watts. Uh, it's supposed to have a lot, at least 300, so it's only a third of a capacity. So what's going on is this BMS, the job is to cut off the voltage so it protects the cells. How does it do that? You see the positive is hooked up over here and the negative is hooked to the BMS itself. Once it senses that one of these cells is it's, uh, dropped its voltage too low, it will automatically cut off the entire battery. So you could have just one bad cell in here that is causing the issue and you could have a perfectly good battery with perfectly good cells, but it's just not working properly because of that. Make it very clear so everybody can understand. BMS job is to protect the cells and the cells are in packs. If one of the cells or one of the packs drops under 2.9 volts or whatever the BMS is scheduled to cut off, it doesn't cut off just that pack. It cuts off completely. So you're not gonna get any power at all. That's why a bad cell can render the entire battery useless because this one cannot just use the good cells that are left and just stop charging or discharging the bad cells. As soon as one of the packs that has the bad cell goes under the voltage that this one is designed to protect, it will automatically turn off voltage for all the cells. So your other cells could have a lot of power left in them, but you cannot use it because the BMS says, nope, First of all, what you have to do is you have to discharge the battery. So if you have a bicycle, this is from a bicycle, just ride the bicycle until it stops. When the DBMS stops and doesn't give you any voltage, then you could come over and look at the cells. Take the voltmeter, put it on DC. You have to look at the configuration of this battery. So this battery is three cells, 10 packs. Okay, so there's 30 batteries in here, three cells, 10 packs. It starts from the negative, ends with a positive over here, right? So it's going all around and then negative and positive. So the best way to verify that, each pack is connected three, three ways this way, and then it stops three ways this way, then three ways this way because it stops over here at the bottom. So how do you verify that? You have to figure out which of these cells it's telling the BMS that I'm too low, and then it stops all the other cells. How do you find that out? So you take the voltmeter, put it on DC, and then check the first one so you see this this is the first pack towards the bottom and i'm going to check this one out it's going to say i have 394. i'm going to go to the next three i'm going to check them 394. i'm going to go to the next pack 394. next pack 394 next pack 392. okay so there's a little bit of a slight lower voltage on on this one now i'm going to go to this pack on top check 374 this 344 so 374 344 this one is starting to be very very weak this one 372 this one 384 so this is a good pack 339 so this pack and this pack are getting discharged faster now which battery is broken in the pack? Well, you cannot verify them when they're connected together, unfortunately. So what you have to do is, if you wanna find out which of the batteries in this pack is causing the issue and replace it, uh, you have to cut the pack away, split each battery apart, and then run a separate test on each cell to see which one is causing the problem. Because if in this pack or in this pack, you have a weak cell, that weak cell will discharge very, very fast. It will bring the entire pack down, the entire three 
uh, pack down and then this pack will just lose its voltage really really fast because these two batteries will work extra time to charge the bad battery while it's discharging and then obviously they're going to lose their charge really really fast so what we know from this battery that's why i verified all of them these are great these bottom ones are great this is okay and these are starting to be the ones that are causing the problem so these cells are replaceable this battery a battery like this costs a hundred dollars so you could buy just the cells that they need to be replaced this bicycle only goes for about nine miles before the battery just cuts off and then you can't use it anymore so if i'm not going to salvage this battery at least i could salvage these cells and i could use these cells for something else later on uh, and repair a different battery or i'm going to split this one out take all these uh, packs out and verify each one of them and then just add a battery for the one that is causing the issue okay so you watch the video all the way over here you want to know how to diagnose each cell individually and this is how you fix a battery like the one that you saw in the video that has a problem so once you cut all the cells out so you have all the cells split out or at least the cells that you have doubts that they are working properly once they're out you need one of these tools made by opus not expensive i'm going to put a link at the bottom of the video for those interested to look at it and what it, this one does it completely charges and discharges the batteries on an automatic process so you could set it up that way that it will automatically charge and discharge the battery and it will give you a full number at the end of how much power you were able to get into the battery you will have a battery that you will know how much capacity exactly is it in it since then i threw away all those cells these are just, just the leftover ones because i threw them away there's no reason to hang on to them and i replaced them with these cells and what happens is that if these cells are a little bit better, those were 2,000 milliamp cells. These are 2,700 or 20, they were 3,000 at one point. If you replace them with this kind of cells, then these will charge and discharge at a lower rate than the other ones. And it will still work very, very well into that battery. You're just not going to be able to use the full capacity of these cells, but these are a patch for those cells. What you cannot do is some of those blue cells were actually in the 900 milliamps. At 900 milliamps, there is, they were cutting off way too early and the other cell was just in standby. This tool will help you diagnose the problem all the way to the end. And you could start learning and fixing batteries. And then once you learn how to do one battery, then you could do a lot more batteries.